Hello everyone, the Network Berg here. Welcome to the first lecture of the Network Fundamentals course. In this lecture, we will be looking at understanding the TCP IP model as well as the OSI model. So firstly, what is TCP IP? Well, TCP IP is a suite of different protocols. They're all mushed together to make the TCP IP stack. It is what we use in today's world to communicate over IP with each other on a network. TCP IP is used to create that network connectivity between two or more hosts. So the moment you have two computers and they're talking to each other, you can consider that as a network, even though it might be a very small network, that is a network. TCP IP does have five different layers at which it operates. It used to only have four layers, but um, due to some I want to argument, but the, the people that developed TCP IP saw the benefit of splitting um, layer one and two out from each other. Uh, it, it, it brought it back up to five layers. So it's very useful for us for troubleshooting, looking at the different layers. Um, TCP IP is also what almost all networks use today. There is still networks actually using something called the OSI model, but it's, it's not it's not something that we can communicate with. We can't really use a TCP IP device and talk to something using the OSI model, but most of the network or most of the internet uses TCP IP. Um, TCP IP was also created by the Department of Defense or funded by the Department of Defense. That's why you'll sometimes hear people call it the DOD model. So what's the OSI model? Before we go into that, why are we even discussing the OSI model? reason being even in today's world and even though the osi model lost against tcp ip and most people favor to use tcp ip it's still a good referencing model so if we're troubleshooting issues on a network and we look at the different layers of the osi model it just makes more sense when you think about it because they work in principle the same way they do the same job, TCP and OSI, but there's just more things to look at and the naming works a bit better for OSI. So what is OSI? It is also a suite of different protocols mushed together for computer networking. It is also used to create network connectivity between two or more hosts, just like TCP IP. It has seven layers of connectivity. So you have a, a lot of different layers and we'll quickly go over them in the next slides. Um, I just wanted to mention that there are seven different layers with the OSI model. It was also a direct competitor to TCP IP very long ago. I'm talking about you in the 70s and 80s. And it is also a project at the Internal Organization of Standardization, the ISO. You'll hear about these guys quite a lot because this is the organization that is responsible for standardizing as much as possible. They try and make it as fair as possible for different vendors to use the same type of network communications, not just networking, but in our examples, it's gonna be networking. Because if a lot of systems are proprietary and you can only use, let's say, Cisco at your network, but you can't communicate with a, a Juniper network, then you've lost a lot of functionality. You've You'll have to spend a lot of money just to buy a specific brand. And then your, the, the people that you connect with might not even use that brand. And then there will be a lot of issues. So they're responsible for that standardization to just make sure everything can still talk to each other. That's why you see something like VRP works very similar on all routers and switches. For more information, there is a wiki article that I've linked here. You can just search OSI model in Google, it will bring you the wiki page. This is a diagram of what the OSI model looks like. There are seven different layers. So we've got the physical layer, we've got the data link layer, we've got the network layer, we have a transport layer, we have a session layer, we have a presentation layer and an application layer. That is so much to remember at first. Um, and they all do very different things. Physical, I just want you to think about things that you can hold, like wires. Data link is where switches start to talk. Network, it's where routers start to route traffic. Transport is where we make choices on what ports and such. 
is going to be used. And then the session presentation application layers, they're basically all one big application layer in TCP IP. Um, but they all have their uses and it's good to just go over them as well. Um, you'll see on the left hand side, I've put what goes into those layers as well. So the first layer, we have bits. The second layer, they become frames. Third layer, they become packets. Fourth layer, they're segments. And everything in the application layer is data. So those data needs to be converted into these different things. And then finally, at the end, they get sent as bits from the one host to the other host throughout the network. And that's how network communication works. Let's go over each of the network layers individually or the OSI model layers. Uh, it's not going to be too long, I promise. Before we jump into that, though, I do want you to remember a very good mnemonic. I want you to think about, please do not throw sausage pizza away. There's even a nice picture there of a pizza. We, we don't want to throw a sausage pizza away. It's quite nice. Uh, but the reason we say please do not throw sausage pizza away is each letter at the start references one of the layers at the OSI model. So if we work from the bottom, so layer one to layer seven, please would be P, which is physical. D is do or the data link layer, not the N for network, throw the, the T for transport. S, sausage for session, P, pizza for the presentation, and then away, which has the A for application. So if we go back, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Very easy way to remember that. And a lot of IT certification will ask you about um, the different layers in TCP IP and the OSI model. So it is a good thing to remember. Okay, now we can have a look at the actual layers. It's not gonna be too long, I promise. I just want you to remember, if you're looking at layer one, that is the physical layer. That's things that you can hold in your hands. It will be wires, it will be actual routers. It could be the power supply of the routers. If there's uh, an issue with the router booting up, it might be the power supply. And we think of that as a physical issue, right? So that is what layer one is. If you hear someone thinking it's a physical issue or a layer one issue, they're talking about physical equipment or links or stuff that might be down. It's also where we start to see the bits that get sent over the wire or over the wireless. Layer two is the data link layer. This is the layer that encapsulates those bits into frames. So frames are what's used between switch ports to send traffic. Frames can contain things such as source and destination MAC addresses. Frames can also contain VLAN information to make sure that it goes into the right broadcast domain. And it's also at layer two where we see things like uh, frame check sequences or an FCS that is responsible for making sure a frame isn't corrupt. If a frame is corrupt, it will just be dropped. Again, you will mostly see switches operating at this layer. If you hear somebody talk about a layer two issue, it could be that they think that the switch port is down, or it could be that they think that the, there might be a wrong VLAN, or the VLAN isn't uh, being tagged correctly on a port, and that's why you're seeing issues on a layer two. Layer three, the network layer. So this is where we start seeing IP addresses. This is also where we start to work with routing. So what the layer three does is it takes that frame, once it hits the router, and it will encapsulate it into an IP packet. So this packet will contain things such as a source and destination IP address. And we already said this is where routers operate. So you'll see a lot of routing or routing happening at this layer. We'll, I won't say OSPF is or BGP is part of this, but it is also kind of because this is where we start to see dynamic routing protocols, static routing, uh, all that good stuff. Again, routers mainly operate at the network layer. The transport layer. So this is where those packets are encapsulated into segments, data segments. So these segments will have things such as source and destination ports. And it will also contain the protocol information. Is this uh, TCP? Is it UDP? Is it uh, STP? It can be all kinds of different things. 
mainly you'll see TCP and UDP, but don't be scared if you see something else. But if you hear people talk about uh, there's a layer four issue, it could possibly be something on a firewall or a port being blocked or stopped or such. Um, segments do also act as a bridge between the actual networking layers, which is, I consider one to four, the actual networking layers. And then five and seven is just the application stuff that we use to um, input into the network. Again, you will see firewalls operating at this layer. Let's just go on the session layer. So the session layer is responsible for managing, opening and closing sessions between the end user and the application itself. So don't just think about a session as a connection on a network. It can be the application uh, that is called from your computer when you open something like, uh, let's say Outlook or something else that while you're putting configuration or input into that program, that, that is kind of the session. A lot of the times when I think of a session, I will think about a phone call. If I'm calling maybe my mother or my father or somebody, when the other person answers the call, the connection or the, the tunnel between us is considered the session, the thing that keeps the connection alive. So it's not really the actual connection, it's what keeps it alive. That's what we can call a session. We will typically see WinSOC, API, SOCstat, stuff like that operate at the session layer. Presentation layer, it's a very fun layer, but it's not something that we usually touch as uh, network engineers. I just want you to think about the presentation layer as the things that we can actually see on our screen. This presentation isn't something that's working on the presentation layer. Pictures that you see on a website is part of the presentation layer. The words on the website is part of the application layer, where they are, how they look. That is what the presentation layer is responsible for. It's also sometimes called the syntax layer. And then the last layer is the application layer. This is what we actually use to input directly into the network. So this can consist, it's not necessarily just things such as uh, Outlook, it can be different protocols as well. SMTP that we use to send email, that is an application. BGP and OSPF that I talked about in, in the network, those are applications. So they actually have a function how they work to get traffic um, on the network or over the network. And it's because of how these applications were written. HTTP and HTTPS as well, those are applications. So when you go to a website and you browse, that is you using an application as well on the browser. So these are the things that we actually use to interact with directly on our networks. This is the last layer. We will not be discussing anything further in the video. We will be looking at uh, how host to host communication works in the next video, but I would like to thank you for watching. Uh, for more information, please go visit our blog. It's www.thenetworkberg com or follow the YouTube channel and subscribe to it and like these videos. It really helps get the message out there so that I can share more of this information with everybody. I look forward to sharing more content. Thanks for watching.